Hey guys, this is Tyler with Diesel and today we're going to talk about the full-time four-wheel drive that's in some of the newer JL models. Let's check it out. Jeep keeps packing technology into the newer models. We have the 4XE right behind me here. It's a hybrid model. All kinds of awesome stuff. One of the newest and coolest features that they packed in the Jeep starting I think around the 2021 model year is the full-time four-wheel drive. This 4XE behind me comes with a full-time four-wheel drive. If you have a Rubicon 392, it'll come with a full-time four-wheel drive as well. Other than that, it's kind of an option that you can get on Rubicon or Sahara models. And it's an awesome feature, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We did a video a while back that I'll link up here at the top of the screen where we talked about the four-wheel drive system on the JL, all the technology it packs, you know, what makes it unique, how, to, how it works, how to use it, everything like that. So that's kind of you know the foundation or the center to this video. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you check that video out. If you're familiar with the four-wheel drive system on the Wrangler versus the four-wheel drive system on the Grand Cherokee in the background there, the Wrangler is more of a traditional locked-in four-wheel drive feel where once you put it in four-wheel drive, the front and the rear axles are actually locked continuously. So it's a full lock between them. So when you want to turn or make tight turns in four-wheel drive, you're really going to feel a binding in that steering wheel. For 21 and the Rubicon 4XE, the 392, they actually came out with a full-time four-wheel drive option, which it takes exactly the technology that the Grand Cherokee has in its transfer case, and it puts it in the Wranglers. So what exactly do you get when you get a Jeep with the full-time four-wheel drive? Well, the core of the four-wheel drive, the full-time four-wheel drive, is going to be a transfer case. The transfer case in the full-time four-wheel drive models is just a little different. Instead of the typical part-time four-wheel drive transfer case where you just have like a shift collar or some splines that actually lock in your front and your rear drive lines together, the full-time four-wheel drive is going to have a clutch pack in there and we can modulate stiffness in that clutch pack. So when you have it in full-time four-wheel drive, what the Jeep is actually going to do is it's actually going to monitor your wheel slip. It's going to be two-wheel drive but it's gonna monitor your wheel slip in the rear end. So if it starts to see wheel slip in the rear end, then it's gonna engage that clutch between the front and the rear drive lines, and it'll lock them up, giving you a four-wheel drive condition. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to pull out of a parking lot onto a snowy road or something, it's gonna lock up instantaneously. And you will feel, you know, maybe a little bit in that steering wheel, but then if you're in the parking lot and it's salted and plowed, and you're trying to pull into your parking space, our Wrangler without the full-time four-wheel drive will honestly really fight you. It'll want to push through, whereas this thing will unlock that clutch simultaneously, just like the Grand Cherokee does, and you'll be able to drive around like you're a two-wheel drive. When you get a Jeep with the full-time four-wheel drive, you don't only get a different transfer case, you actually also get some different features in it. One of those features is you actually get CV front axle shafts because it's a little smoother ride, a little less clunking that you might have if you do want to, in fact, leave this in four-wheel drive all the time and just kind of drive around town with it on a snowy day like today. So now that you know kind of the different tech behind the full-time four-wheel drive system, you might say, well, that sounds like more of a Grand Cherokee or more of an Audi with a Quattro, an all-wheel drive system rather than a Jeep. I want a Jeep. I want to go to Moab or something. I will promise you that this thing has all of the blue blood four-wheel drive in it that the white wrangler that we have the eco diesel does when you want you can always put it in part-time four-wheel drive and even though there's a clutch pack between the front and the rear drive lines there's clutch packs in your transmission there's clutch packs all over they can lock those things up solid when they want it still has the regular four-wheel load just like anything else so it still has everything that you need out of a true jeep transfer case but it's going to give you a little bit more of that finesse and honestly the the options to not have to take it in and out of two and four when you're driving, especially in a snowy place like this. One of the cool aspects about the full-time four-wheel drive and why you get that in every 4XE and also the 392, I don't even think the 392 will let you put it in two-wheel drive, is because with this full-time four-wheel drive, they, they feel comfortable for you to drive it around on asphalt if you want 24-7, but we can also distribute the torque that these Jeeps can put out, the insane amounts of torque that these Jeeps can put out between the front and the rear axles. So on the Rubicon 4XE or any of the 4XE Jeeps, you actually won't get all of the engine and battery power delivered to the drive line unless you're in full-time four-wheel drive because they're worried about you uh, having too much torque to the rear axle and possibly damaging it. So if you're in a Rubicon 392, that's why your Jeep actually won't go into two-wheel drive. If you're in a 4XE, 
put it into full-time four-wheel drive and do a launch with it versus two-wheel drive and you'll notice a difference that they actually let the engine you know deliver more power because of the full-time four-wheel drive so now that you know all about the awesome tech in the full-time four-wheel drive jeep models now the question is when do i want to use it and why would i want it as you can see today randomly we are just getting absolutely blasted by snow i don't think i've seen it snow this hard this year Full-time four-wheel drive is made for climates or days just like this. So if you want to throw your Jeep into full-time four-wheel drive and drive around because you might be driving through a snow squall here, but then it'll be dry pavement here. If you're driving on a snowy road and then you get to a dry parking lot, full-time four-wheel drive is exactly made for things like this. I don't really know personally if I would use it, you know, if I live much in the southern climates. Unless you had a 4XE and you wanted to put down all the power all the time or a 392, but full-time four-wheel drive is awesome like this because you can set it and forget it. If you're in the Wrangler that only has part-time four-wheel drive models, you're going to put it in four-wheel drive and as soon as you try and make some sharp turns, you're probably going to just say, okay, you know, I need to put it back into two-wheel drive, back into four-wheel drive, things like that. The other question is, can I use it all the time or when can I use it? That's exactly why Jeep made this. You can put it in full-time four-wheel drive and drive it constantly with it. There's going to be no ill effects. There is one reason why you wouldn't always drive in full-time four-wheel drive and that's just because of the front axle disconnect. I'll put a video we did up here on the front axle disconnect explaining that. So when you do put it in full-time four-wheel drive, that front axle disconnect is going to lock, which means your drive shaft, your front drive shaft will actually start turning even if you're not using the four-wheel drive. So if you're in, you know, two-wheel drive, you're probably going to get a little bit of extra fuel economy, you know, maybe a half a mile a gallon or so, one mile a gallon, but you will save a little bit of wear and tear on your front. So really, you know, if, unless you're in a situation where you need full-time four-wheel drive like today, I'd probably leave it in two-wheel drive, but don't feel guilty. Don't feel like you're going to overuse it, whereas some people will because the Rubicon four-wheel drive that we have is labeled part-time, so they think you should only use it part-time. So when you come into the Jeep, it's going to look exactly the same as the Jeep without the full-time four-wheel drive. But as you can see here, we have a four-high auto or a four-high full-time. We have two high and then we have four high part time, which will be your locked in four high and then obviously your four low. So one of the cool things that I just learned about the four high part time is that it's really easy to shift it from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. And that's because we don't have that shift collar anymore. We have those clutches in there. So as you see, Amanda just knocks it into four high auto right there. So we are in four high part time. And then if you wanna go over to four high full time, all that's really gonna do is change the programming somewhat. So the reason it's so easy to shift between the different gears is because we're really just changing, uh, you know, how they control that clutch back between the two. And I could be misspoken here. There could still be a, a complete shift lock collar like we have in, you know, the part-time four-wheel drive transfer cases, but that's a pretty cool aspect. And then don't forget when you go from two high to four high, we are going to lock in that front axle disconnect too. So right now, as you can see, we do some figure eights in the parking lot here, and it's basically perfectly effortless on the steering wheel, right? There's no binding, no you know chattering like you would get if you were a four high part-time. So now let's put the four uh, high and part-time Amanda. And then we can do the same figure eights. And we can already feel the Jeep. You really can't see it on the steering wheel so much, but you can feel the Jeep kind of chattering. It definitely doesn't feel as effortless mm -hmm. as it was before. And that's because now we have a much more aggressive lock between the front and the rear. So this would be, you know, kind of if you're off-roading on rocks or mud or, or something like that where you need it. But really in the snow, all you'd ever need is that full-time four-wheel drive to get you the maximum traction. So that is it for today's video on full-time four-wheel drive, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. We'll try and get to them. This Jeep behind here, this is actually Jim and Amanda's 4XE. Amanda's, sorry Jim, it's not yours really. Um, so she just got this about two months ago. It seems to be a pretty awesome Jeep for her so far. Definitely gonna make some videos on this in the future. So if you guys have questions about the 4XE, leave them in the comments so we can plan for future videos. I'll also put a video up here way back when we did a video with Jim and Amanda on Amanda's Jeep before this. It was a two liter JL. That's a pretty cool Jeep too. You should check that out. Um, I love the color on this. I, I think like white and then pink might be my second favorite color. So it's pretty cool. It's an awesome Jeep. This is the first time I've seen it today. Um, so I'm pretty excited to get in it and do a little bit of driving. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe and we'll talk to you next time.
Thanks for watching Diesel.